Hey folks, Petula here. We often hear about coaching for performance, high performance team, that sort of thing. So that's what I want to address in this video. I want to talk about coaching for performance and how coaching for potential is actually better than the most common used version of coaching, which is coaching for compliance. And I also want to show you what coaching for potential looks like. So let's get started. You already know me by now, so you know I like to really level set and make sure that we're starting from the same definition. There's so much talk about coaching out there, but are we on the same page? So I am an ICF coach, and that means that this is the definition that I abide to. Coaching is partnering with an individual or a group in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. Right there! The word potential is in the definition. Now, if it was that simple, I could just change the definition to not include that word. But you get to, to see there is a hint there already that coaching for potential is better. So let's differentiate then between coaching for potential versus coaching for compliance. Coaching for compliance is so common in organizations because, um, you know, there are the rules, there are the roles and the plans. And many times you're not even coaching, you're mostly just teaching people on how to really fall into that line, uh, be compliant. You don't allow the, for deviation because the plans and the frameworks, in the end, they don't really have any. The main problem with this type of coaching is that it creates a lot of uniformity, which might seem desirable, you know, from the perspective of some organizations, but nobody really is interested in working like that. Um, People might be excited about learning new things and getting better at their craft, but very few people fit into molds and nobody really likes to take criticism all the time that you're doing this wrong, you should be doing it this way. Just think of it, someone comes into your workplace right now and says, everything that you're doing is wrong, let me show you how to do it now. How do you feel? I would feel pretty deflated for sure. How much desire do you think people have for change in a space like that. I would bet that it's very little. So if you really want to start making an impact with the individuals and the teams that you support and through them transform the organization, you really need to step up your coaching skills and start coaching for real, which is coaching for potential. And I'll tell you that this works if you coach a CEO and if you coach someone in customer experience or a developer. So here's what coaching for potential looks like. You have a goal. Imagine the future, a set of skills you want to develop, um, you know, responsibilities you want to take, and that works on the individual and in the team level. Maybe the results that you want to achieve. Um, and I'll give you that, that maybe you cannot develop those, those goals alone by yourself, but no one else does that alone by themselves either. It's at the very least, co-created to be important for the organization and for the people taking on the task. Then you have the assessment. And here you look at your strength. You look at something that you're already good at, the skills that you already have, something that really works for you. And you take that something that really works very well and you figure, how can I apply this to achieve that goal? You know, being really resourceful. Then you have the plan literally designing the next steps. How will I learn what I need to learn? Um, will I be getting any mentoring? What is it that I plan on doing? And then executing, which is the part of putting that plan into motion and adjusting the plan as needed, because as you know by now, any plan needs an adjustment. And finally, you have the support. And here I'm really talking support system. We're talking a network of individuals and other teams even that are there to help you with your with accountability. Maybe they even went to a similar transition before, they can cheer you on, and you know, they, they are really there as a network that is designed to support this new mindset and new behaviors to stick for the benefit of your goal. Now pay close attention because it almost looks like coaching for compliance. Any type of coaching will follow those five characteristics and you know you have your goal and then you have um, some assessment between current state and future state you plan you execute and then you have some sort of support towards your success but when you're coaching for a compliance the only thing that's going to be the same is you 
planning and executing your your next steps but really how you think about defining the goal how you assess the gap between where you are now and where you want to go and definitely how you get support that is completely different when you're coaching for potential when you're coaching for potential all that is co-created it's about um, you know it's coming from a place of strength a place of possibility and and positivity and that's that's really how it happens in coaching for potential in coaching for compliance what's going to happen is that the goal it's usually already there boxed for you the gap assessment it's about lacking it's about the skills that you don't have it's about your weaknesses and how to improve on them and then the support pieces are too much about tooling feedback that other people are going to give you so there's a lot of elements that are too external as opposed to what you want internally and what you can do internally you see the distinction coaching for compliance is like this you teach your team what is scrum is you talk about the scrum the five events you plan in the beginning then you have the daily scrum 15 minutes no less by the way our sprint is two weeks for everybody on the organization um you meet at the end of the sprint for the review yada 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 the scrum master is the person who structured the backlog refinement this is how it happens right you you've seen that you, you, you've been there. Now, coaching for a potential looks very different because to begin with, you observe how the team already works together. You're going to ask about what's going well. You're going to ask about what could be better. And, um, you know, if the team is using Scrum, you're going to interject, well, how, how is Scrum working for you? And then you're going to hear things like, oh, well, you know, the famous one, our daily scrums are taking more than 15 minutes. We're not so happy. Um, so then during that kind of discussion, you are going to teach them not in a workshop in the discussion, human to human, teach them about the, the value of regular synchronization. What does that look like? What does that bring? Then you're going to teach them about the time box, the concept that is not just an arbitrary measure of time that someone decides elsewhere. It has to make sense. Um, you know, how do you really use a time box? Now that we are equalizing the, the understanding for everybody, you ask the team, what is it that really works well already as far as time boxes or as far as synchronization for you? Now, if they can't find anything on that, just keep digging and, and ask then whatever else works really well for you. Because the point is that by learning from their successes, the team start tapping into their strengths and then they're gonna use whatever strength that they have to leverage success for their daily scrum structure and timing. You are supporting the team on improving something that makes sense for them. You give them knowledge, you give them support for them to do just that. And they come from a place of abundance, a place where they can use their own strengths. It doesn't matter that other folks meet up every day at 9 a.m. for 15 minutes. None of that matters. What matters is how they want to synchronize and what is important for them as far as synchronization. Is it about the goals? Is it about the tasks? About the who's doing what? It's really up to them to decide. I had coach teams that used to meet up twice a day during release times and I coach teams that only met three times in a week. It doesn't really matter. It has to work for the team. You are coaching them to become better and more effective and that is very personal to the team. Effectiveness will look very different for very different teams. I hope you're noticing the difference in here. There is a nothing wrong with coaching for performance for improvement. The point is really understanding that performance is not a unique line for everybody to cross. Performance takes into account where you are right now and where you want to be. For some teams, that's going to be, you know, we want to have less meetings. For other teams, it's more about delivering, uh, achieving faster delivery. I want to finish this by saying that be aware that coaching for compliance is too constrained. I would even argue if this is really coaching because it kind of determines that there is only one way in which things can be done and that very specific, unique way of doing things um, is the one that defines who's performing and who is not. It boxes individuals into categories 
which kind of might make it easier to manage people. But I would argue again, do you really need to manage people or just the work that's being done? And what about the results that we're really generating here? So coaching for compliance creates resistance, a major thing in agile transformations. It creates distrust and it can even breed resentment. So that's what I wanted to share with you today, folks. I hope you found it useful. And if by any chance you are detecting that you're coaching more for compliance, don't overthink, but ask yourself, what is it that stands in your way of coaching for potential? I'll give you more insights in the blog post in the description down below, as always. And once you're there, by the way, just go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter because that's where I give you exclusive content, exclusive invitations to workshops, and you can even just ask me questions personally. So just go ahead and do that because I'll stop here and I will see you in the next video. Bye.